are at the heavy duty aftermarket week here in Grapevine, Texas. We are at the Gaylord, just a big, huge hotel, convention center, absolutely fabulous atmosphere here. It's great to be back at live events. Your normal host, Jamie Irvine, is not able to attend this show. We're doing it live here, and unfortunately, with Canada, restrictions, COVID, all that fun stuff, uh, he's unable to attend. So I am your guest host. I'm Tyler Robertson. I am the CEO and founder of Diesel Laptops. I've also been on the show. So I said, Jamie, no problem, man. I'll take over and do some guest episodes for you, which is great because our guest today is actually a company Diesel Laptops works with as well. Yeah. So I want to introduce you to Bill Murth, the Director of Business Development at IPD. Bill is actually a returning guest. He's giving me a hard time. What do we do? What do we talk about? I'm like, Bill, you've been in episode 10, episode 74, episode 101. Like, I think you've done this more than I've done this. It's not getting any easier. <laughs> well, Bill, welcome to the show. Welcome to Grapevine, Texas. How's everything been going for you guys so far here? Thank you, Tyler. And uh, sorry to miss you, Jamie. It's like having Ed McMahon step in and host the <laughs> show. It's a little strange, but uh, it's great to be here. Yeah. So show how's, you know, I think traffic's a little light here and everything. Obviously, yes. we lost some people and people are still a little nervous, but you know, it's, it's been busy. People are walking, people are networking, there's things going on. Is this your first event or have you guys started to do them again? Where's, where's things at? This is, well, we had some events that were really early on just to kind of put our foot forward, but the HDAW event has always been a fantastic event and it is so good to be back. Yeah, it's not quite as, you know, the crowds in, in the aisles as normal, but it's been a very, very productive show and we're very, very excited. And just to see these faces, the industry is made up of phenomenal people. It's what makes this industry great. And to get back after two years and see everybody has been a phenomenal experience. So I've been talking to, to Vince Barry, oh. uh, your company, for two years on Zoom sessions. Yes. It felt weird doing a face-to-face. -face. Yes. Uh, and, and, you know, you realize he's only uh, four foot five. <laughs> That's he's going to love us for this. It's a little shocking. <laughs> Uh, but yes. <laughs> well, let's just say this. We're, we're here at HDAW. There's a lot of discussions that show about the future of trucking, right? Mm -hmm. um, there's all kinds of things going on. I mean, we're, I mean, there's futuristic robots driving trucks. There's electrification, but there's new technology, new things happening. What are you? Any trends you're starting to see kind of unfold here? In the when we talk about like just diesel engine repair, from diesel engine repair, you know the the engines have been getting more sophisticated over the last 10 years and so forth with emissions and, and so forth. Um, and some of the technology on the pistons has, have become so sophisticated. But what's phenomenal about that is that the aftermarket is able to keep up. I remember, I've been in the engine parts business for a, a few decades now. And, um, you know, there's always this this talk back in the 90s or late 90s and early 2000s that the aftermarket may not be able to survive because the, the engines are becoming more and more sophisticated and not just anybody can produce a part anymore and so forth. But we could not have been any further from the truth at that point. We, the aftermarket on engine is thriving and it's that, it's that entrepreneurial spirit, it's the ingenuity, it's the imagination that gets this done and the aftermarket is alive and well in, in 2022 and will continue to do so. So I've been around this industry a little bit on the repair side for, you know, two decades now. Man, it feels weird to say that I'm getting old. But, you know, I remember, like, take transmissions and, and drive axles. I remember our shops actually rebuild those things. They'd only make it half a million miles if they need to rebuild. And then all of a sudden, machining got better and they got more precise and better lubricants. And all of a sudden, transmissions have million mile warranties and we're yes. not rebuilding them. We're just swapping them out because it's quicker and easier. I can only imagine as new engines have developed with each iteration, the emission cycles and these things, the same things happen. They've just gotten the machining better, the tighter tolerances. That's got to put pressure on an aftermarket provider such as yourself to constantly deal with the changes and, and those things that are happening. Yes. And, and really the, the neat part about being with IPD is the innovation. We have a long history of innovation and we tend to look at an engine in its process of being rebuilt. So. It's not a brand new engine off the showroom floor. This is an engine that has been rebuilt once, twice, three, three times, maximizing the life of that engine and, and actually the resources. It's actually a green process to, to rebuild and rebuild instead of just throw away. And, um, and, and our innovations of looking at engines as they're being rebuilt and finding problems that occur 
throughout that process that maybe was not ever thought of when they were designing that original engine. And so we come out with parts to solve problems. You know, our steel liner for ISX to prevent a block being ventilated due, due to a, um, a failure or cryo-treated head bolts or, you know, special grooves in, in, in liners and so forth to give a better fit in an older block. All of this sort of stuff is what we do to, to make that engine last and continue to be able to be rebuilt over a long period of time. So, you know, at our company, at Diesel Laptops, we're trying to build these parts platforms, right? And allow, figure out ways to let people do real e-commerce on, on websites digitally. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the places we talk to, they're like, yeah, we want to sell parts. And we start having conversations with them. And eventually like, well, show us your line card. Show us who you're stocking. I'm actually shocked how few of them carry engine parts. Yes. yes. Right? Like what, what is, what is, why aren't they and well, why should they be? My, my role here as I walk around HDAW is I call myself a, an engine parts evangelist. And, and my message to the independent uh, parts uh, distributor is, my goodness, don't send your customer down the street to get engine parts. That entity also has all the brands that you have on the independent side. So if they need an engine part, why do you step over? Why do you walk away from it? Embrace it. And, and at IPD, our message is we can make engines easy. I actually carry around little cards with our 800 information that says how to become an engine expert. Just call our, 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 our team of, of highly trained engine experts and we will be that extra guy behind the counter that, that knows engine. And so we'll make it easy for you. We'll give you the information you need. We'll back it up with a good warranty and so forth. And you go out and sell this and open up new revenue uh, channels, new margin opportunities, and we'll make it easy for you. Yeah, and I know you guys have been expanding too. I heard there was a deal recently with uh, Redline Emission Products to, to stock some other accessories and, and you guys yes. are doing other things besides just overhaul kits to help the problem. We, we think outside the box all the time. In fact, with our IPD Extra brand, which, which aligns with good quality companies that, um, that focus on areas that we don't focus on, Redline on the emissions and MaxiForce on the smaller bore Caterpillar coverage, has been very successful. Uh, and, and that makes it really a, you know, a lot of fun, just trying to find ways to make it easier for the customer to gain access and information, place the orders, and so forth. So, Well, we're gonna take a quick break. You've been listening to the Heavy Duty Parts Report. So we're gonna take a break here for our sponsor. Having issues with your commercial equipment? You need ATA's Technology and Maintenance Council, also known as TMC. TMC develops recommended practices addressing the most pressing technology and maintenance issues affecting commercial vehicle fleets. You can join TMC for just pennies a day, and when you do, you'll get access to thousands of pages of technical information, and you can attend events like the upcoming 2022 Annual Meeting and Exhibition, March 7th through 10th in Orlando, Florida. For more information, check out TMC at tmctrucking.org. Don't have a heavy-duty part number and need to look up a part? Go to parts.diesellaptops.com or download the app on Apple or Android to create your free account. Looking for high-quality fuel injection for heavy-duty applications? Having one supplier for fuel injection allows you to better serve customers by providing them with a complete line, which increases your sales and profitability. Learn more at ambacinternational.com slash aftermarket. All right, so we're back from our break. And again, thank you to our sponsors. And we were talking here, we have Bill Murth with the uh, Director of Business Op Development at IPD. And we're just talking about engine parts and selling engine parts and, and these things that have to happen. And I think part of the conversation, what I'm hearing from you is sometimes people, it sounds like they know they can sell engine parts. They're just kind of a little scared. It's not brakes, it's not fifth wheels, yes. it's not suspension. It's Man, that's an expensive engine that if we sell something or do something wrong, that's a that's a thirty thousand dollar fix, ooh, yes. boo boo, not a five hundred dollar boo boo. So, you know, the stakes are high. So how how do you guys help them kind of overcome that? Is it is it really is are the stakes really that high? Or is it just more of a, a fear and they just don't understand? It's it's more of a fear. You also have to know, I mean, somewhere along the line there's a there's a trained mechanic that's gonna be putting those parts on too, that's gonna say, well, this this piston doesn't fit in this hole. You know, there's there's lines of defense along the way of, you know, to, to make sure that the parts are, are going in. We, we can start with good information, no matter who you call when it comes to engine parts, to go and want to know the engines, the, the numbers off of the engine. And once we have that, we can go in and, and tell you what you need. 
At IPD, we use very current part numbers, so there's no ambiguity as to is this the right number to to, to use, and um, and then you know you just you build the engine knowing that the, the last line of, of of defense is having a trained mechanic. You know, yeah. so if they're reselling the parts, their chances are they're reselling it to a a business that builds engines. Well, what I'm hearing, it's not just, hey, sign up to be a distributor, buy my stuff, and you're on your own. You guys are yeah. there to help them through yes. that process and yes. get them comfortable. I think at least anything new. Once you learn a little bit, you learn a little bit, and all of a sudden you're like, oh, now we're making more money. I got another yes. product line, another another revenue chance. And I like what you said earlier, too, and I knew that at my company, I know like I need to sell the $10 cable and the $10,000 tool, because if I point them in a direction for one thing, I'm not sure they're coming back to me for the other thing that I do sell. And that's a thing I think a lot of people miss yes, out on. Exactly. So yeah. So let's talk about the other side of it. Let's say I own a truck, right? And I need an overhaul, mm -hmm. right? I, you know, and I think a lot of people are like, oh, I got to have OEM. OEMs, oh, that's what came on it. It's better. But a lot of times what I heard from you earlier is you guys actually make their stuff better because you get to see failure rates. In many cases, yes, because we deal with the rebuilding of engines, not, not a new engine. And it gives us an interesting perspective. It gives us an interesting history and data to look at to, to help us to figure out what, what parts to, to design and how to make changes to it. And I would say, you know, if you're an end user, um, there are really very few throughout history, you know, in the early days, you know, the aftermarket on engine parts was kind of will fit, might fit, you know, that's that ship has sailed a long time ago. It is, there is a certain amount of liability if you blow up an engine, more so if, if you have a brake failure. And so, you know, for the most part, my manufacturers watch this and nobody's really coming out with just something to throw in a box. It's, it's, it's a very technical business and it, it, there's, the quality in the and, aftermarket is very good and, overall. I mean, and let's face it, this this isn't your guys' first year building building these things. And yes. truck engines are kind of the small engines that you guys do. Yes. This is well within your wheelhouse. Yeah, yes. So, you know, let's talk a little bit about the technology, right? HJW, new things coming in, all that stuff. Um, you guys just launched a new division in your company. Can yes. you talk a little bit about that? Actually, it's a whole new company called IDS, and it's uh, Industrial Digital Solutions. And we are taking our first step forward uh, in a, actually a partnership with uh, diesel laptops to provide more of an engine focus to the telematics or the a look inside of the engine electronically. Um, our first iteration is a plug-in in a J1939 port and it will talk, especially it's really geared towards an owner operator or small fleet. It'll talk to your mobile yeah. device, your, yep. your, your phone and give you a glimpse inside that engine for preventative maintenance code reading. Um, it might tell you what's what's brewing inside that engine to, to say you might want to get this looked at because in about a month or so you, you could have a problem. And it really opens up the engine and gives you an opportunity to look into it, giving that owner operator more visibility, more control. So was it a big, was it a big thing inside your company to say, hey, we've been making overhaul kits and engine parts for 65 years. Let's go create a technology company. Like that, that's, that's, it's in one regard a far leap, but in another one, it makes a lot of sense because yes. that's where we're all going. And we love to innovate. We love to think outside the box and we love to find ways to uh, satisfy our customers, give them a way to solve a problem with the end user. Okay. It's really about the guy that throws away the box or the guy that owns the uh, e e equipment, you know, and, and giving them tools to make their lives easier and more productive and profitable in the end. So the other kind of trend I see that I, I feel we need to talk about, because like everybody talks about, there's, there's talks going on, speaking engagements, it's supply chain. Yes. Right, it's, is there product available? Is there not product available? When's it gonna get better? You guys obviously manufacture parts. You're a global company. You're shipping yes. things literally on almost every continent. Give us just a little overview. How, how are things, are they getting better? Is, when's this gonna get better? Well, <laughs> like, there's. There's an, uh, there's an old Depeche Mode song. Uh, I don't want to spread any blasphemous rumors, but I think that the aftermarket gods have got a poor sense of humor. And they've ramped up demand and they've taken away supply. Um, <laughs> and so it's like, what? And it's been, it's been, it's been okay. We, we, we've been getting through it. Uh, at IPD, we like to ship the same day at at least a 98% fill rate. Those days are temporarily out the window, but but we're doing a very good job. We've been actually having record sales. 
And, you know, in the end, we look back and we say, wow, we've shipped more than we ever did, even though we think we can't get product. But we're getting a lot of product. I think the worst of the backlog or the slowness of getting product is behind us. It doesn't mean it's going to fix itself anytime soon, but we think the worst is, is over. We're able to adjust now. And I, I think, I, and I see better days ahead, but we've weathered the storm rather well. So as a company, do you, is this now like, hey, we need to start thinking about if this ever happens again and have contingency plans. Does that start coming to the conversation then at a strategic level? I think everybody's looking at it and saying, how can I retire before it happens again? So, <laughs> I'm thinking the same thing. L <laughs> literally, I mean, you know, we're, we're, you know, we're seven year old company, right? But we're growing fast doing these things. I literally, and this is a big deal to us. We literally have a seven figure purchase order that we can't fill. And we're on like day 90 or whatever it is yes. now. And it's just, it's so frustrating. It, it's a tough thing. It's frustrating. And, and as I hear people talk about their own businesses at the distributor level, it's like, we're going to have a great year if we can get parts. So it's, it's really being experienced by everybody. Um, we've, we think we're, we're faring better than others. And, you know, in that could take, you know, air freight, it could take expedited shipments. I mean, we're spending a fortune to get product in, but in the end, we got to keep engines moving. Engines, the engine parts business, much like the trucking business, it, it keeps our economy going. When you, I always challenge young people when they talking about what, what to do and what industries to go in. I'll say, no matter where you're standing, look around and, and know that a truck built that. Your house, that TV, yep. the Apple sitting on your counter, it's all trucks. and. And we've got to keep that going. And then behind that for IPD on the industrial side is the oil and gas and the construction and the industrial. So it, these are critical markets and we will go above and beyond to keep those parts in stock, to keep those engines being built, to keep us all moving forward. Well, I'll tell you, the person I feel bad for, or the person in the company, is these people that have been in the back office of procurement and purchasing, <laughs> and no one's ever cared, right? Because things yes. have just flowed, and all of a sudden, they must be getting hit from, like, the CEO down to the, the counter guy, like, yes. where's my stuff? I worked with a person for uh, 32 years. I never knew his name. <laughs> and now I'm like, hey, Bob, I, I need you. Come <laughs> yeah. here. Want lunch? You're my new best friend. Like, yeah. where, where's my stuff? Yeah. No, I, I'm yeah. joking. But yeah. it's, uh, it is. And, and they deserve a lot of credit, even though they, they often reach the, uh, the frustration end of, 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 of things. But at IPD, I can tell you that our team is phenomenal. And, uh, you know, it's funny, you either are buying too much or you're not buying enough. And, uh, and it's always too much from the finance people and not enough from the sales people. So, so they drink a lot, but you know. Hey, you know, I'm a CEO. I thought that was my job to drink a lot. But apparently, <laughs> apparently I got some company. Everybody's drinking now. <laughs> <laughs> Buy stock in alcoholic companies, right? That's, that's, right. that's what everyone needs right. to learn about this. So, well, hey, with all that said, I want to say to everyone here, you've been listening to the Heavy Duty Parts Report. I'm your guest host, Tyler Robertson. We've been speaking with Bill Murth, the Director of Business Development at IPD, a wily veteran on the Heavy Duty Parts Report. I'm sure we'll get him back on here again. To learn more about IPD, visit ipdparts.com. I also know they have the other website as well they've launched to do with the technology side of things. I think it's IPSRX.com, I believe, IDS, is, the, yes. is the website. So, Bill, thank you for being on the Heavy Duty Parts Report and for joining us at HDAW. Well, thank you for having me. And if this is like Saturday Night Live, you know, I get uh, after five, don't I get a big party or something after five visits? Um, wait, I, I think I thought you were buying them. As long as you use your credit card, yes. bar's open. Okay. Thank you for watching this video. Click here to subscribe to the Heavy Duty Parts Report YouTube channel and click here to watch another great episode.